brought to you by Wendy's. Let us bring the tailgate to you with delivery. The third quarter that sunk the Sooners actually started at the end of the first half. When you look at this play, they go into their bag of tricks, and I appreciate the creativity because you want to try to get points with just under a minute to play. You go, the, you go to Nick Basquin, he doesn't see what he likes, and then he fires a dart into Charleston Rambo, but it's deflected, and boom, A.J. Parker going the other way. We know that Kansas State turns this into being down three points to being up by four, and ultimately they shut out the Sooners in the third quarter. But here's the key here. This is great football. Sooners. Nick Basquin's patience. They fi he finds something that he likes. He's got his man wide open in the middle of the field, and he fires an absolute laser. This is a dart in there, and ultimately, this interception is going to go on Nick Basquin's stat sheet, but it should go on Charleston Rambo because this is a perfect throw from Basquin. You see him there, get set up, fire a laser, and it hits his man right in the hands, and he does not have the opportunity to make the play. Next thing we know, we're going the other way. The Sooners were held scoreless in the third quarter, and we're going to get into why on this episode of Tape Don't Lie. We know how this works, and uh, so uh, we know what we're capable of. Uh, we got to all do a lot better, coaches, players, everybody. Uh, there's everything left out there for us, and we know that. And so, you know, we can't we can't listen to all the noise on the outside. We got to do a good job of getting ready for the next one and uh, learn from this. And we've always responded well when we've had a tough one like this, and I would fully expect that this team will do the same. And here to break down the Sooners' offensive performance against K-State, none other than Stadium College Football Analyst Max Brown. What's going on? What's up, Mike? How's it going? Doing great. Let's pull up Jalen Hurts' spray chart first and foremost. This is a guy that went out and he was productive through the air as you look at what he was able to do in terms of hitting different spots and making sure that he kept that completion percentage high. Who would have thought we'd see a spray chart from Jalen Hurts, uh, that type of quarterback now? I mean, we would never thought that happened. I mean, I, he made his first start against me in 2016 where all he could do is kind of simple throws and running the ball versus now he's spreading it all over the park. This offense is lethal, and this Oklahoma Sooner offense is really leaning on him, not only with his arm, but also with his legs and very productive through the deep ball. I think that's something we've really seen. And uh, – high completion percentage as well. You have to like what you're seeing offensively if you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan. Yeah, I think Sooner fans are absolutely in love with what they're seeing out of that quarterback spot. I'm going to go – I'm going to – listen, I'm going to bite the bullet here. I am surprised at what this spray chart looks like because when we pull up Kyler Murray's chart, it looks very similar to what we saw out of Jalen Hurts. And this is something where maybe even better from Hurts in this same game from a season ago against Kansas State because Kyler Murray didn't even attempt a pass – over 30 yards. We see Jalen Hurts completing a couple of those. So that's a big plus. But let's get into it. It wasn't the pass game that sunk Ohio, that sunk Oklahoma against this Kansas State team. It was the running game. And I think that's the biggest difference. Over 300 yards on the ground a year ago, barely getting over that 100 yard mark this year. Let's pull up the tape. Let's start with this. This is their bread and butter play, right? This is that little counter with the guard and tackle pull and you get the block down, you get the running back handoff. And this is a play that we've seen them be successful with consistently, Max. Yeah, and it's a testament to how athletic and how physical their offensive line is. And we broke this play down a couple weeks ago, and Texas Tech had no shot. Right. I mean, when you talk about the ability to, to throw the ball and then also run with it, you're pulling both guys around. You're getting a hat for a hat. Oh, and all, all the while you have two backs and Jalen Hurts is a third running back. I mean, good luck if you're a defense. Before this game, we saw Oklahoma really punish teams with this play. Yeah, and Max, listen, you got into the point that we're going to get into in a second is Jalen Hurts is that third running back. But as we get through this play, we see it be dominant, effective. We see that they are getting hat on hat, hat on hat, and they're opening up a, a, a humongous hole. But when we get to Kansas State, a team that now has got a little bit more film, a team that now is ready to make some adjustments, a team that we know plays more physical than Texas Tech. When you watch it now, look at the way that the defensive end and the defensive tackle get in the hip pocket of those pullers, and they're able to take down Kennedy Brooks. Yeah, and to me, the big difference here schematically-wise is you see a four-down front for this Kansas State team rather than a three-down front you saw versus Texas Tech. So it allows the DN and the D-tackle to really get up fast in a hurry. And this is a testament to Kansas State's kind of energy and motor across the board with their defense. These guys are really getting after it. Um, but, yeah, I, I think you're also the 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 one-on-one -on -one matchup that sticks out to me is Creed Humphrey in the middle. He's supposed to block back on a defensive tackle that's a three-tech. So it's way out there versus in the Texas Tech look, that guy's a little tighter. It's easier to get to. So a testament to that, that Kansas State defense uh, deep in the red zone. 
Yeah, we're going to see it again here. Look, you see that defensive end, and he's able to freeze Jalen Hurts, and this is where we get into Hurts as that third back, and we see him here. Same look, same two guys pulling. You see the guard, the tackle pull, but now we've got the back to the left side of Hurts, and he, the back now provides some window dressing, freezing that defensive end from being able to go make that play on Hurts and allowing those guys to still try to get out in front as they build around what is that base play that we saw against Texas Tech. Yeah, and you can see here, I mean, Kansas State's obviously able to make a, a, a play, but you can see, like you said, Mike, the different things Oklahoma can do off of this. Testament to Kansas State, a big reason why they were able to maybe get it done is you, you, you create some of this havoc, and you're asking your corner and a linebacker to get up there and make a play. So it's good, but it's only a matter of time before Oklahoma gets an explosive off that one. Right, and that's the big thing, and we see a little bit of explosion right here, right? You get a big, you get a nice run for the first down, but this is Hurts. This is Hurts becoming that third running back again. This is the opportunity where you have your backs in the backfield. You obviously have your fullback. We know he's going to go down and get that, get that block. You see the guys pull. They have so much out in front here. This is what this play is supposed to look like when they run it with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, and I loved your point earlier about the window dressing. Look at the window dressing on this play. you got a back going to the left. That you're going to bring everyone and Jalen Hurts to the right. It forces these Kansas State linebackers to either hesitate or take a step in that direction. We can see both the Mike and the Will be late, be slow to roll, late to go. And against Oklahoma, when Kansas State is outmanned to a T, uh, if they're late, this is done. That's a big, running, uh, big run for the quarterback. Yeah, and I think we go from Jalen Hurts as their third running back to him becoming their number one back in this football game because essentially Kansas State worked overtime to neutralize this rushing attack. They were on their grind to make sure that Trey Sermon and Kennedy Brooks did not beat them. That's why those guys combined to have so few carries. That's why this is a team, this is a this is a group of guys. This is that's why this team did not allow them to run up that 300 yards that they had a season ago. They really limited what you got out of the running backs, what you got in the run game. So Jalen Hurst becomes your lead running back. So what do you do? Let's work some draws and let's take us through this, Max Brown. Yeah, I mean, it's a testament to Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Riley's creativity. He's got two backs next to, uh, to Jalen. I mean, that's you don't usually see that uh, across most teams, but they're saying, hey, those two backs are now two lead blockers. We've talked about the third running back in Jalen Hurts. Well, he, here he comes. You're asking a safety body to fill right there. That's awfully tough, especially in this play, which we haven't necessarily seen in the past plays. Oklahoma is hat, hat for hat and fundamentally sound. They get blockers across the board, and it's another big run play. Yeah, this is three guys leading, and we saw that in the diagram we had the guard pulling out who, who's kind of hidden by that massive left tackle, but the guard pulling out, and then you have the two, the fullback and, and Trey Sermon, who's probably your best running back. These guys are both out there pushing and both they both the guard gets a body the fullback gets a body the running back gets a body and that's what makes things work and then as we get into more of this game this quarterback run game we get to see the we get to see charleston rambo and obviously he's here on that cross but the real key for me is creed humphrey at the center position operating as a lead blocker again we're getting jalen hurts with a lead blocker moving down the field and look at his patience too Offensive linemen always get kind of antsy when you call their number in a screen or a draw, and they always get going too fast. Testament to Creed's played a lot of ball, and he's patient there. But just imagine if you're a defensive coordinator having to try to defend this play. you got a screen action on the bottom of your screen coming from right to left. Hurts could throw the ball there, and he's got blockers. Yep. Or he can call his own number and do the draw. Like, good luck. I mean, this is why Oklahoma is so explosive. When you do have – a power lifting running back at the quarterback position. He's able to just get an easy 10 yards. So hard to defend. Kansas State sitting in too high, makes it even tougher to defend the run. And uh, it's just kind of a pick your poison in this instance. Yeah, I see the wide receivers. They're all stalk blocking. And for me, I thought it was window dressing in terms of the screen. But pre-show, you and I had that meeting, and you talked about it as sort of a package play with him coming across there. And then we get to Jalen Hurts and – this, again, this is what makes him such a great option at the running back spot is just raw talent, the ability to just see the hole, find a hole, find space, and then, oh, yeah, you mentioned the power lifter at the quarterback spot, do just dominate his way into the end zone. Yeah, to me, this isn't even that poorly defended. They have guys in gaps. They have guys with correct eyes and kind of filling a little bit, but one juke move by Hertz paired with his power towards the goal line. I mean, this is an absolute weapon. This, we're, we're not used to seeing this speed and explosion uh, there, there's no secret why they keep calling his number in the run game. I think the question is, you want to keep him healthy for sure. But this game offensively, Colin Hurts' number through the ground 
was was super uh, super effective for Oklahoma. Yeah, the way that defensive back's head snapped back, you know that Hurts hit him with a little bit of power because that one hurt, and he felt it when he got down on the ground. But this is just great vision. Again, you see that the guard cannot get this block, so you stop in where the, where the run's designed to go, pick your way out of it, and then go make a go score a touchdown. Yeah, well blocked and well done for sure. All right, this is the other part. We talked about the, some of the draw game, and we've talked about him in the run game as becoming the best option. Go from third running back to first running back, which is what we saw in some of those draw plays. And this is the other element of the run game that I think is really unique for Oklahoma because some of their best running plays, several first downs were picked up on true passing plays. And did you see this game? Kansas State, they do everything right. Four-man front. We've, they're going to drop seven guys into coverage. They do all the little things correct, but you got to look at that yard marker. It's only four yards to get. And when you've got guys dropping, not sitting at the sticks, Jalen Hurts recognizes, I got green in front of me. I'm going to go take it. Yeah, and once again, if you're Kansas State on defense, you're covering the pass. You have to worry about C.D. Lamb. All these weapons they've watched week after week of Hurts just dicing them through with their arm, which we didn't, we didn't necessarily say that a couple years ago, Mike, right. but this year we're saying that. And so they're in, sitting in too high. They're covering all their guys. And then kind of Hurts pulls out the rabbit out, out of his hat and says, well, I can still run. I can still be the effective runner we saw at, during his Alabama days. And we've seen bits and pieces. But this game, it really came out where he says, all right, you cover my receivers. Fair enough. Let's just run the ball and, and let me punish you that way. Yeah, I think that this is, again, that for me, this game speaks so much to what Kansas State did well and how Hurts as a weapon was able to neutralize even the best laid plans. You've got seven guys in coverage. You're protecting your safeties. You're protecting your corners from these wide receivers and all the weapons that they have. You've got a guy that's fl making sure to cover Trey Sermon on that little flare out. Doesn't matter. Jalen Hurts with that power is going to be able to put run behind those pads and pick up the first down. And then we get to this situation here in, in, in essentially at the 10 yard line. And what we see out of this again, Jalen Hurts, he's set up in pass. He's looking and then recognizes I've got green. Let's go make a play. Schematically, it's so tough for Kansas State because they know they don't have the athletes up front necessarily to get a straight up pass rush. So they're forced to play games and stunts with defensive tackles and defensive ends. But what that opens up is you have some clean runways for, uh, for Jalen to keep running because those defensive linemen are getting out of gap. So credit Jalen for punishing those guys, but just another factor at play that makes it tough to defend this team. And uh, he's a red zone weapon. I think there's one thing to be dual threat, but it's another thing when you get close to the goal line for him to really lower his shoulder and you don't worry about him getting hurt as much because he's so big. This is a weapon. And uh, we, we talked about it pre-show, but if you're Kansas State, I don't know what that Mike linebacker is doing, dropping four yards into cover or four yards deep into the end zone, but uh, Hurts is making him pay. Yeah, I think the interesting thing here is I see guys running routes, right? But then I also see Creed Humphrey take off and go get a block. And I'm in my mind, I'm it's again, it's Lincoln Riley playing with your eyes. Is this a design draw play where everyone's just holding the look for so long? Or is this a, a situation where Hertz is letting people know I'm taking off and they just automatically react? Either way, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, no doubt. Beautiful thing. The fact that he can throw and run is absolutely lethal. Yeah, this listen, we're gonna talk, we're gonna we're gonna talk up Kansas State because what they did was great. This is why Jalen Hurts had to be the weapon to ultimately run, to, to be the go-to running back in this football game because Kansas State shut everything down. And because they did that, they put too much on Jalen Hurts' plate, and that's why they had a scoreless third quarter and why Kansas State was able to walk away with the victory. You look at this play. This is a great scheme play, except you've got a confused left tackle. Do I block the defensive end? No. I want to go get that linebacker. Oh, I'm too slow to get the linebacker. So on an option call where you're optioning off either the linebacker or the defensive end, you have to have one of those guys be blocked. When you get neither of them blocked, you end up with Hurts having to do the quick pitch, but you've got three guys automatically running to make this tackle with the fourth coming from inside of the defensive line. Yeah, you mentioned not executing at the left tackle spot. C.D. Lamb in the slot doesn't get that Sam backer as well. So you talk about there's three guys right there. And maybe that's a testament to kind of when Lincoln Riley is saying, hey, we didn't play very well. They're not really executing on offense right here. You should not. You should have one option pitch, man. Like you said, you shouldn't have three there. And uh, credit Kansas State for their team speed. But, I mean, Hertz has got to attack downhill at the end man on the line of scrimmage more. He's got to force their hand. Kansas State rallies to the ball. This is kind of a similar blueprint we saw at parts in the game where Kansas State's just playing with high motors and getting it done. Yeah. This is the last play we're going to show you, and this is C.D. Lamb right here. And, I mean, look, this is a play that we've seen plenty of times go for big yardage, 
But because Kansas State is so disciplined, because they are selling out against the run, that OU fan is going to be sad because these guys are going after it. Let's go through this play, Max. I mean, I'm going to give you the corner. I'm going to take the safety. Yeah, if you're the corner of the field, I need to give him props. This is a fantastic job. This is him getting coached up. This is him making sure he knows what Oklahoma likes to do with this fly sweep. But watch his eyes. He sees the motion coming to him. He sees, hey, one of the most explosive players in the country is coming towards me. I'm going to shuffle down, and I'm going to trigger right now. And even though he doesn't make the tackle, he gets C.D. Lamb off his point. He's forced to get outside, and it's a great job by him, a great job of the defensive tackle getting motor. And this is a testament to Kansas State's mindset all game where they're saying, hey, we might be outmanned a little bit, but we're not going to get out-hustled and out-executed. Yeah, and I'm going to McPherson, the safety number 31, because he's doing the exact same thing. He doesn't make the tackle, but he forces him out of bounds. And you see Walter Neal come immediately, and then boom, safety triggers. He's in there going to make a play. That is great team defense. Great team defense is the reason why Kansas State got the W. And the big thing for me, Max, football's a game of matchups. And Kansas State, because of the way that they play, they are great in run support. They are phenomenal in terms of making sure that they play that umbrella coverage to force you to throw everything as a check down. They do all those things right. That's why they gave Oklahoma fits. Do you think that there's anybody else on that schedule for the Sooners that can do that can duplicate this Kansas State effort? Yeah, I got that Baylor game circled a little bit. I still have my hesitations there, but that's a quality team. I think your point's spot on, though, in terms of, I mean, Kansas State brought, the, brought their blueprint to the park. They executed it well. They knew that, hey, we're going to be an execution hustle team, and they got it done late in the game. It's still high scoring. Jalen Hurts still had a great day, but they did enough to uh, to slow up Oklahoma. And I, this whole college football landscape got a lot more interesting with this win by Kansas State. Absolutely. For Max Brown, I'm Michael Felder. This has been another episode of Tape Don't Lie. Brought to you by Wendy's. Let us bring the tailgate to you with delivery.